Hello everyone, so I'm just kind of going to do a bit of a run through of trying to answer the age old question of how far will my kit go? And so whether this is whether you're building it or buying it for myself, this will help answer that question. And I think it's quite a good one and it always gets asked. So how I spin this around is very much to ask almost a question back is what do you want it for? Now. This falls into the requirements element, so I'm, I'm kind of wanting to try and gauge from the individual, uh, and this is for yourself, you're asking yourself exactly, you know, what are you going to be using for? You know, is it going to be using for rats in the back garden, or is it going to be used to sort out foxes that are coming across from a field from afar to come and get chickens, or you, you might be out um, stalking deer, and you know, there's a multitude of other stuff. So. So this is where I then put into the, these three categories. So whether you go for close, medium, or long range. And these are my personal thoughts about you know, what uh, deems close, medium, and long range. Purely from a night vision perspective, I'm not, not too fussed of whether it's daytime shooting, because that's a different game altogether. You've got the ability to see very much on a wider aspect. You've got the ability to see on how wind is performing, a uh, multitude of other things. And I think uh, up to 300 metres is kind of a, to me, a nice area to think, you know, that people wanted to shoot with rifles. I know that there's rifles more than capable of doing that and more, uh, but for night vision, that's not, that's not me to even understand or comment on. So, so once I've understood exactly what you're going to be wanting to use the, the kit for, I can then start making at least a suggestion of what additional torch you'll need because with the night vision kits you always need illumination uh, if you for example if you used to take the the standard kit that i build uh, you can quite happily point that to the moon with no infrared uh, illumination whatsoever and you'll see the moon quite happily there's no problem with that and the reason being is the moon is illuminated by the sun as we all know or hopefully you know but if you don't you know now so because of that you obviously be able to see through the kit this great side oh, oh great that's you know fine i mean that's 384 kilometers away so it's a fair old distance but for now back on earth you obviously want to then start thinking well i need to get some form of illumination to my target and understanding the range will then help guide you that so it's actually quite nice that the uh, the T series or sequence of torches in terms of how they're labelled out almost reflects exactly what you want to try and do. Now, with the T series, the, the T um, twenty, for example, gives you an indication that the the lens is uh, approximately twenty millimeters across. T thirty eight, thirty eight millimeters, and you obviously then you can then tell the slip theme that you've got. So. Given that, you can quite happily then think, okay, look, the larger the torch, the better, because not only does, will it give you the long range, but also because you've got narrow and wide beam availability, you can then make some you know, more flexible choices. And the video that I did recently uh, almost demonstrates quite well of how uh, the torch flexibility in terms of the three modes that you get and also the ability to have a wide beam versus a narrow beam you can focus more light onto a target so it's, it, it does work quite well the other factor that we need to then bear in mind is the infrared frequency so they fall into two categories one is your 850 nanometer and the next one is your 940. now an 850 is pretty much probably the better one that you want if i'm perfectly honest initially and the reason why i say initially and it comes from more personal experience because an 850 nanometer uh, LED, and these are LED driven ones, what tends to happen is it gives you a kind of a red glow. Uh, and at distance still you can see the red glow. I mean, you can't see it with your naked eye how it's illuminated out across the ground. You can't see anything like that. But the problem that I suffered was very much that the permission that I got kind of given or asked to work upon was was absolutely battered by someone going up there with just a standard lamping kit and that lamping kit had a, a red filter on it which is fine and there's hundreds and hundreds and probably even thousands of people who've gone out and done exactly that same thing and you know they've done quite well 
But then what you tend to find is that the the animals, because all their friends are getting kind of shot and then they don't come back ever again, they tend to learn that if you then associate a red uh, kind of light or anything kind of like coming up flickering of red, it's danger, go. And that's what I suffered. The, the, the rabbits would, as, as we was bringing around the spotter or even the scope and you're coming down, they would see that red glow and they'd be off. Now to flip that, great uh, gentleman Ian Cyril uh, had a conversation and we we opted let's go for the 940. Now opting for the 940, there's, because the frequency is different, uh, obviously higher up this uh, spectrum, uh, whichever one you want to look at, so it's a, it's a higher number, um, it doesn't give you that red glow, it's a different glow altogether and even from the human eye when, you, when you're looking at it, and I, I would recommend for whatever you do, do not shine these type of torches, uh, especially the T74 or any of them for that one matter. Because, just because you can't feel it and that it's bright, it's not that it's not doing damage to your eyes. So whatever you do, don't do not do it, just full stop. But what I then did is I switched to the 940 and that uh, gave me a, a different view. It was very hard to even see any of it at all. And that actually improved the experience because they, they just, they were, that was pure, night vision hunting they just did not have a clue and you know unfortunately met their maker in a sense so so if you're then getting to um, you know struggling with you know, any animals that are lamp shy uh, because they've obviously been associated with uh, red lights etc 940 nanometer is good however there's a trade-off when you go uh, to this frequency here you tend to lose almost um, 40 to 50 percent uh, loss of light hitting your target so your longer ranges will deplete now because the t74 with an 850 nanometer can quite happily hit uh, 300 meters and, and upwards you know, I've had, uh, had quite a bit of a tinker around I've got 400 plus meters on it uh, which is fine and again I'm not going to go into the realms of actually ever wanting to encourage anyone to shoot out of that distance but it was just to prove that it could be done now because obviously if you take a 40% uh, 40 or 50% hit on that I can then obviously think about medium work now to me again I'm using a, t a sub 12 foot per pound air gun very much rats rabbits that's my domain I don't need anything more and it's purely just for looking around the field if I'm perfectly honest so that suits me quite nice and then what I want to then do is obviously if I want them to push uh, as much of the light as possible this is where my brilliant drawing here demonstrates. So what I'm trying to almost articulate is when you've got your torch, if you're putting as much light on a focus beam as possible, all that light energy there is going to your target. If you've got a, a, a wide beam, so when you're you know, focusing your beam down, if it's wide, all this all this here is, is wasted. Along here, there's, there's, it's just going into nowhere. All that energy is gone. But if you were to then concentrate around here, what then happens is all that then comes back from your target exactly the same as an eye works you know we're, we're getting constantly getting you know light photons hitting the back of our eyes we process that and off you go and that's what the sensor's doing for you so we get all that come back and then we get a good image so from there that gives you the ability to kind of get an understanding of your requirements type of torches that you want the frequency Mm, narrow or wide I, I having gone through the experience now I'll show you my the first torch this was my first infrared torch uh, a cheap ultra fire uh, thing with a you know an infrared LED in it it did the job but you know I was I was in the closer in there but it had no flexibility in terms of setting the beam it was very much fixed but I then upgraded to the T38, but then saw saw the light and opted for a, an Ian, Ian Cyril's um, T67 and T74. Now the other things that I've actually experienced if I've been going out is you know, fog. That's almost a, a no no to the degree. I mean, you can have light fog; it will impact the actual range. It is exactly the same as driving in fog at night, and you put your high beam headlights on. It, the, the experience is exactly the same, and you, the experience is rubbish. And if perfect eyes, the whole 
night experience was rubbish so I'd probably not do that dust uh, you can quite happily see dust get kicked up so if you're in a, an, an area that's got wind blowing you've got dust particles coming up etc etc you are going to see that it's very much a kind of a um, almost a same as you kind of get with fog but not as not as intense it's a really strange one to explain now pollen uh, that one was a uh, one that happened very recently i was out uh, just what, three three-ish weeks ago and the pollen here in the uk was just horrendous i took a stupid decision to go out to one of my other permissions and the, <laughs> the landowner had not cut the grass for a while and there was a breeze up coming off and you could literally just see this stuff just coming off the the grass and obviously when the light is hitting it all that then gets knocked back so it gave the whole experience um it wasn't good uh, but again you know it was one of those ones went out and didn't shoot anything uh, obviously you know other facts that, uh, that actually have an impact in terms of ranges again using the moon as the example if, if that was illuminated i mean you could have a target uh, which we've done before which uh, the where we're wanting to shoot is fully illuminated but where we're shooting from is not and that is almost an ideal scenario where almost you don't need uh, an infrared torch to a degree you can use whatever illumination down the ground it's it's only going to be useful in uh, areas that the quarry that you're shooting at is just not bothered about what's what's light light security light that's always there constantly etc etc then it's not going to matter one bit so so there you go so that's kind of how to understand you know how far will the kit go and give you a bit of a flavor of you know the tools of choice for your torch and again you know it's a, it's a bit of a plug at the moment um, ir light builds they've you know ian's never um gone wrong with me the quality of his torches have been great uh, his knowledge about the whole torch range I mean, i've just touched on a little bit his just uh, surpasses my knowledge on this at all but this at least gives you a flavor of the lot so Hope you like that. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you want to know anything else, just let me know. Thanks.